This will be a short video on replacing the pads for the Brembo brakes that come standard on the Focus RS and a few other models. I'm going to be swapping in the Mountoon track pads because I have a track day coming up. The first thing I'm going to do is bang out these pins. On the back side of this bolt is a 13 millimeter bolt. <clears throat> okay, now you can push this spring down and work this bolt out. Now this spring comes right off. Now there's two 18 millimeter bolts holding the caliper on. Back behind here. Uh, yeah, there. And there. might need a hammer to break these free. There's one. Okay. Now that the second bolt is almost out, you need to get ready to support this caliper with something because you don't want it hanging by the brake line. I have these, which are great for hanging up on the coil. Uh, you could use tie wrap too. So I'll take this last bolt out. Make sure there's no kinks in the brake line. Hang the caliper right up there like that. Now this is a great tool. I know a lot of people use C-clamp for this, but if you're going to do this with any regularity, it's worth the investment to get one of these because they work really well. So you just spin these out to about the size. get the two plates onto the four pistons and just crank it like a ratchet. All four at the same time go right in. A lot of times when you're doing the C-clamp method you'll compress one and the others will come out and you'll have to get a board in here and basically do the same thing. This just makes it so easy. And then back it out and those pistons are compressed all the way in. So now we just put the caliper back. Being careful of the brake line, not to get it twisted the wrong way, which I almost just did. And the caliper itself goes behind the mounts back there. So this bolt will go through the mount first and then into the caliper. The Ford specs say to replace those bolts uh, every time you take this caliper off because they come with some Loctite from the factory. And the torque spec is 80 foot-pounds for those. But I'm going to reuse the bolts. And for a little insurance, my torque spec is going to be a couple hammer wax. <clears throat> Now I'm going to give all of this a quick cleaning with some brake cleaner.
So here are my new truck pads. Whenever I'm handling the pads, I always like to use these rubber gloves because you really don't want any type of oil, even from the other gloves, to get on these pads. And here are the shims. You always want to use these. They're, uh, they're used for acoustic deadening, and they also provide a little bit of thermal protection. I got my shims on. Now I'm going to give these a good cleaning before putting them in. So as you can see, they come with a good amount of dust on them. I find it easiest to start with the top pin. And I like to use this to pound it back in. That way if the hammer slips, you don't ding your nice blue calipers. So then you can hear the difference when it gets all the way in. Hang that on there and push it down. Now when you put this one in, you're going to want to make sure that it goes on top of that one. And that makes for a nice easy install. Okay, now we just press that spring down. Oops. I was just about to say, make sure you get these sides lined up with the caliper. Alright, so that gets tightened down to 20 foot pounds, but I'm taking this to the track, so I'm going to tighten it down pretty tight. There you go, that's it. Okay, the back brakes are pretty easy. The first thing to do is remove this spring. Since we have nice painted calipers, I like to put my rag around the screwdriver and lift that one side, and that comes right out. Now we have two seven millimeter Allen bolts here and here that come in from the back. Now I have some MCS shocks, so my suspension sits differently now. But when it was stock, there was a problem taking this bolt out with a standard socket because the sway bar would get in the way. So I bought this low profile Allen socket with a low profile ratchet. Um, if you have stock suspension, you might want to invest in one of these because this makes it a lot easier. So the first thing to do is to pop the caps off. Now just undo these two Allens. And sometimes, well, most of the time, these bolts won't come out too easy. So I just use the screwdriver to work them out. Now, this just pulls off. I like to be careful not to drop the pads because I'm going to be reusing these pads. All right, as you can see, the one with the spring goes in the back.
So now we need to compress the piston. And that's what this kit is for. Now this piston takes the A adapter and we'll use this. And it's a right hand, so we go with the right hand tool. This one's the exact same except for it's a left hand. Okay, the way that this goes together is you put this piece through the handle and it comes down and rides on this and that gives back pressure right here and the adapter goes on to this okay I'm going to screw this piece down so it fits in there line up these holes onto the piston if I can do that All right, hold that in and unscrew this now to tighten it up up against the back here. All right, so now we got that pretty snug. Now we can turn it to the to the right to push it in, and that's what the right hand means. It means it goes to the right to compress the piston. All right, that's all the way. I have a 22 millimeter here to break this part back off. Loosen it up. Now the piston has been compressed. Now I give the rotor a good clean front and back. I think sometimes people forget to do the back. Okay, remember the one with the spring goes on the inside. And I only do the shims on the inside one for these rears because I like to show the Mountain logo. But if you're not into that, I'd suggest putting the shims on both of them. And it's just rest right in there. Now with the spring compressed, or the piston compressed, that should fit right over. Then we have these two studs that bolt in. Okay, these get torqued to 20 foot pounds, so pretty snug. And don't forget the end caps. And those studs, they don't hold the caliper tight because, as you can see, it moves back and forth on those studs. Uh, what holds it tight is the piston from behind and this spring. So to get this spring back on, you want to be careful or you can easily scratch it like I've done before. Um, put this part under that tab and that goes in the hole. And then put that nice and deep in the hole so it doesn't slip out. Now you can just grab that and get it over the tab there. And I did it without making another scratch. That's great. Now that the car is down on its wheels and I have the lug nuts torqued to 100 foot-pounds, it's time to bed in these new brakes. Uh, the stop tech procedures are pretty similar to most procedures where I'm going to do 10 decelerations from 60 to 10 miles an hour, all right after one another. And they also suggest if you're bedding in track pads to add four decelerations from 80 miles an hour down to 10 miles an hour on top of those 10 from 60 to 10. 
So I'm about to go out and do 14 decelerations to start the bed-in procedure. Okay, so I just got back from my first bed-in procedure. I don't know if you can see that, but those things are blue hot. And I'm a couple feet back, and I can feel the heat coming off of them big time. So I'm going to let these sit for a couple hours and cool off and go back and do it again. And then drive around on them on the street for a couple days, and they'll be ready for the track. Uh, one thing to remember when you're bedding the brakes in and they get this hot is to not use your parking brake. When you park, just put it in gear and leave the parking brake off.